Hey there, I'm Breck Leeson, and welcome to the second episode of the Moody and Gate podcast. In the first episode, we figured out in real time what this is going to be. It's really just what happens when you have a foot in the door of multiple communities, but you don't really feel like you belong anywhere. I've been working in the very hetero world of rock music for most of my life, but as a gay man, I don't really feel like I belong there. But it goes beyond that, and I kind of want to go back a little bit in this episode and get to the root of the situation. I want to talk about being bipolar and how that sort of made me feel so other, but also how it kind of empowered me to finally embrace some of my otherness. I think for all of us, it kind of starts around our early teens, our preteens. Um, especially if you have uh, some sort of um, emotional or, or mental issue. You know, that's right when puberty is starting, that's right when our brains are developing. And I know for me, like at 13, I really had this uneasy sense that something wasn't right. Um, especially, and I'd work really hard all day. I'd keep so busy to, to push it to the back of my mind. But then it was like at the end of the day when I would finally just want to relax um, it felt like something was undone. I just couldn't sit still. Uh, it was like just nothing was enough. Uh, it was like I had something really important left to do before I could go to bed, but I couldn't remember what it was. And it was, I, I can talk about this because I still have this feeling, only now it's just like, well, yeah, I know, this is just you, Brett. Uh, but at 13, it was new and it was just awful. It was like this gnawing in my gut that just showed up. And then I remember I finally got the courage to tell my mom about it. <laughs> and I went to her room late one night and I told her, and she's just like, oh, Brett, that's, that's anxiety. Everyone in our family has it. And I just went back up to my room like, oh, okay, great. So it's just me, it's just something I have to deal with. And so I just like threw myself even harder into my life. I'll avoid other people, I'll avoid myself, and I'll just throw myself into activities. And so that was like the next few years of my life. And um, and as I was doing that, you know, aside from feeling that uneasiness and that anxiety, I just started feeling really overwhelmed with all the emotions. Um, you know, terror, sadness, happiness just anything and it was like on a hair trigger anything that throughout my day could throw me off emotionally so hard to the point where it felt okay and to make sure that no one else could know what was going on in my in my mind and so I was constantly just um, just keeping myself in check which honestly at the time meant disassociating I was just like, if I just keep my grades up, if I just keep succeeding and winning things, no one will be able to call me out on being an emotional mess. It wasn't just that I looked at it as a bit of failure, it's just that I, I saw it also as being like really emasculating. I was really embarrassed. Um, boys and men aren't supposed to be such emotional messes. I already, and I knew that there was something up with my sexuality that I was not ready to deal with. I was getting called gay at school, and that was not an option to be gay on top of that. I was getting called gay because I did gymnastics, I played music, I <clears throat> didn't have a lot of friends, but a lot of them were girls. I was doing all the things wrong. And I had inklings that I might be gay, but the second I felt that, I pushed it down, just like I pushed everything down. And so I just had to keep moving. And I did. And then, you know, I went to college and um, before I went to college, I did finally go to a psychiatrist because, you know, things started turning really negative and I started really turning, I would say now turning on myself, but at the time it wasn't like turning on myself. It was like turning on the world. It was very philosophical. It was very existential. It was just like, I hate this it's so pointless we life is pointless we are just animals on a star spinning into oblivion nothing i do matters and this was my self-talk all day but i didn't let up on myself i still had to work really hard i just couldn't take any pleasure in it i couldn't take any pride in it 
and I couldn't let myself forget for one moment how pointless it all was. And so <laughs> I was going away to college and I was like, okay, well, this is what I think and feel, but I still have to somehow survive. And I did somehow allow myself to go and get a little bit of help in terms of medicine. I wouldn't talk to him about what I was thinking and feeling and because I wouldn't admit that it was fucked up, but I got medicine. Um, the first semester of school, I wasn't sleeping less and less every night. I started pulling my hair out. I knew that I was really struggling. I was having a lot of trouble focusing and I was getting by because fortunately I was like an art major. I was writing a lot, um, but I, things, things were off with my health. Um, and so I finally, I told my parents and I was hospitalized briefly. And there I was properly diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Because what happens a lot of times, if you're unfamiliar, um, it's just trial and error a lot of times with medication, which frustrates people. You know, you get diagnosed with one thing, but it turns out to be another, and you find out because of how you react to the medication. So if you're only medicated for depression and you're bipolar, the antidepressants throw you into a manic swing. Now I'd had manic episodes before, but never to this extent. I was experiencing a psychotic break. And I had to immediately be taken off that, put on some tranquilizers and put on proper bipolar medication. And honestly, it was really fast that I got stabilized. And I'm really grateful for that. But I'll be honest, being in that hospital was a life-changing experience. Um, it wasn't great. Um, and it wasn't because the therapy was good. I tested positive for marijuana and painkillers at the time. And so I was put in a dual diagnosis clinic, which is for people who have a mental uh, diagnosis, as well as an addiction issue. I did not have a serious addiction issue, but the people I was put in with did. A lot of them were dealing with crack and meth and had been in, in and out of this hospital many, many times. And so I did not get to actually deal with my issues there. I did not get to properly attend therapy and deal with my situation. I just had my medication dealt with. Whether that was good or not, I don't know. But what I got out of being there is I saw some people who were really, really fucked. And it really stoked me to get the hell out of the hospital and get back on with my life. Now, at the time, I thought this was great. I was like, okay, Brett, like, you gotta just stop obsessing over yourself and your emotions and feeling bad for yourself. And you just need to like get back to college, finish college and get on with music. Um, but now looking back, I realized that it really wasn't until a few years ago that I properly got into therapy. Um, but once I got back out and once everyone knew I was bipolar, I had kind of broken the facade of Brett is stable and healthy and we can leave Brett alone. He knows how to take care of himself. And all of a sudden, the possibility of being gay didn't seem so crazy. And I was able to slowly open up my mind to this. There are so many things to come out about in life. First, I had to come out about being a musician because no one wanted that for me. So once I went to college for that, that was one, one way that I ruined the idea of what I was supposed to be. And then when I came out about being bipolar, that was huge. I really ruined what everyone thought of me and my family. They really thought 
that I was taking care of myself and had it together. And I worked so hard for so many years to make them think that. And I ruined that. It wasn't true. I was struggling so hard and hiding it. And then I had months, that next month, I commuted to school from home at my parents' house and they watched me like a hawk. And it was awful. But the truth was out. I was struggling. And then, then the next step of being gay didn't seem like such a big deal. So I was able to start opening up my mind to that. And so that was like my own version of a dual diagnosis, which I think is what I'll call this episode. It was like all the things that I wouldn't allow of myself all of a sudden became possible. And there are so many different ways to come out. I'm a gay bipolar musician, and I know I am now, but for so many years I was pretending not to be. And so, I'm curious, how many ways did you come out? <laughs> I came out as an artist. I came out as bipolar, and then I came out as gay, in that order. If you don't, don't isolate The strong and the silent ones are statuesque And brave alone on a hill We may read what they've done But now the love of a son is there to comfort them Winds was but isolate human souls open up complicate if you don't don't isolate strong silence breaks down and cries out for human sound open up go create if you don't, don't isolate The strong and the silent ones are willing to risk their happiness They think that they're brave, but vulnerability is the scariest Because when you share your fear you're not a realize You're not a nearly alone Or as helpless as you thought The strong and the silent ones May question their tactics in the end It is quite a gamble To calculate how your life is spent Who 
fear there to catch them all To listen when they fall short and cry This time Strong silence Winds was but Pestilates Human souls Loping up Complicate If you don't You're isolated Strong silence Breaks down and Cries out for Human sound Open up Co-create If you don't Don't isolate